Here we go. Time to go dog sledding. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right, so we're going to have you get in first. Put your back as far back here as you can. Okay. Then you're going to put your legs, get nice and cozy, pretend that you guys like each other. Yes. <sighs> Which one? Oh. I'll just do this. I'll just do that. All right, and if you guys need something to hang on to, hang on to this one or this one. Don't touch that blue one or that thin red one. Okay. This is gonna be cool. <laughs> They're excited. You can go ahead and turn the heater on. <laughs> the knobs are up there. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. All right, get up. Oh my god, cool. <laughs> 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 Which this is the life of a musher, the dogs do always come first. <laughs> they get fed than I do. <laughs> but alright, I bet these guys do look a little bit different than what you guys were expecting. These guys are all the same breed. They are all Alaskan Huskies. That's cool. These guys are fired up and ready to go. I am standing on my brad mat with both of my feet and all of my weight. Just so they're not sprinting. These guys love what they do. They got their start in the gold rush era. Miners would basically breed anything that wanted to pull and that was good at it. So you have Siberian Husky, Malamute, the native sled dog. You have German Shorthaired Pointer, Saluki. Anything leggy, slender, fast with endurance was bred into these guys. And Denver had you guys sign waivers, yes? Yes. Okay, I probably should have checked. Now's not the time. Probably should have checked before uh, we left. Turn but around. You turn. <laughs> but <laughs> usually I'm a little less frazzled. I haven't had my usual four cups of coffee. <laughs> and this is me without coffee. Imagine me with about four cups in me. All right, but yeah, like I was saying, these guys got their start in Gold Rush. This was your mode of transportation until snow machines came on the scene. You wanted to go visit your friend the next village over. You harnessed up your dog team, put your family in the sled, and went. Uh, you know, like the vaccine run, that's all these guys. They are bred for this and they are dang good at it. So, a little introduction to the individual dogs. Running up front, the one with the cute little fashionable booties. Oh! Just one second here. There. Everything's frozen up real nice, so that means everything's real split. Like I was saying, the one up there with the fashionable booties, that is Valcor. He is eight years old, and he is running lead for me today. Running on his left, is Rumba. She's the only dog on this team I actually own. She's a multiple Iditarod 
lead dog and she is seven. Running behind them in swing, the one gray one who runs like a camel over that second row. That is Toby. Toby is nine years old. And running on his left is Carolina. And if you look, we also have Carolina's son. Carolina is that black and tan butt right in front of us. Or Carolina's son is that black and tan butt, and that's Rex or uh, Bjorn. Him and his brother look identical. That little dog running by herself is Baramir. She's a year old. Carolina is eight. Please tuck everything in. They like to whip us around the turn. Oh. There we go. What are we? And Baramir. So, quick explanation of the position. Lead is, oh, lead is responsible for listening to my commands and taking us on the right trail. That's why I run my personal lead dog up there. The rest of these guys I lease. They look at me like a substitute teacher or a stepmom. <laughs> they like to let all their bad behaviors shine. And when I yell at them for it, you're not my real mom. I don't have to listen to you. <laughs> That's why it took so long to get these guys harnessed up. They are like toddlers. They like to be stubborn. And they like to lay down when I put their jackets on because they know it annoys me. But yep, so. Those two dogs run up there because they're leaders and they listen to me. <laughs> Running in that position behind them. Those are our swing dogs. They are my backup leaders. So if for some reason Rumbo wants to get sassy and not listen to her mama, me, those guys are there to drag everyone in the right direction. Carolina runs away from me sometimes. She's one of the ones who listens to me. <laughs> And behind them, Baramir running by herself. She is a year old. She is a puppy. She will only run two to three tours depending on the length of the tour. Then I switch her out for one of her sisters. She is running in team. She is there to be everyone's cheerleader. And just a little extra dog power. She's also a pretty girl. So she's there to motivate those back two boys into trying to impress her and catch her and pull. <laughs> Otherwise, they like to slap. They're just like us. They like to slap at work sometimes. <laughs> Doesn't mean they don't love it. They just like to see what they can get away with. <laughs> and those two boys closest to us, that bouncy butt all black one is Bonsai. He is three. Running on his left is Bjorn. Bjorn is the biggest dog in this kennel other than Barso's. Barso's is a little taller, but Bjorn has about 10 pounds on it. <laughs> and Bjorn is two. And that's just quick introduction to everybody. <laughs> These guys are very responsive to my voice. So it's quite hilarious on tour because I will do that little really annoying high-pitched voice that lets these guys know they're doing a good job. But then one of them will start slacking or be like, ooh, squirrel, I'm going to pull us into the trees. <laughs> and I bust out what is called my dog trainer or my musher voice. <laughs> As you can see, people don't expect those demonic sounds to come out of a 5'4", 170 little lady. I always say I'm practicing for my backup career as a death metal booklet in case dog mushing doesn't pan out. And a little bit about me. I was born and raised in Santa Barbara, California. I gave up, I turned in my surfboard for a sled and gave up year round 80 degrees sunny weather for negative 25. My family still doesn't quite understand it. But <laughs> welcome to my happy place, guys. I can stare at dog butts. <laughs> Coming up to our turn around. Straight ahead, straight ahead. Boom, run, run, straight ahead. <laughs> so, when we get up here, I'm gonna get off the sled. I have to fix a few of their snaps. It's cold, the snaps like to come undone. I'm just gonna ask that you guys please do stay in the sled. Okay. Just because if they feel that lack of weight, they will take off without us. <laughs> 
and I will set my snow hook, that's like my emergency brake, but it's just a big metal hook in the ground. This is the first tour of the day. These guys are strong. Give me half a second here. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Jeez. Huh. Rumba, huh? Hey, no, rumba, huh? Huh, straight ahead. Hey, no, jeez. Like I said, it is toddlers. Get up. Because Valve likes to take us over all of these branches. I don't like doing that. <laughs> so that is why I called them Ha. But Rumba here is just a little too good at her job and went to make a U turn. She's just a little too good sometimes. <laughs> but to me, that is the opposite of a problem. <laughs> I will never complain about having a very good lead dog. <laughs> How you doing? I <laughs> know, uh, my hands are cold too. How to get it to work with a shoe? Okay. You can't like it like this one. That, that off is... Uh, I'm trying to get my... Because I got mine in a... My feet are cold. Is that... Almost. Cool those. And if you guys would like, I can take a phone or something and take some close-ups of these guys if you'd like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't feel anything, so I'm uh, going to... Yep, I feel you on that one. Yeah. It's, yeah. Thankfully, there's one that I Tomorrow. I think tomorrow it's supposed to be like five degrees. <laughs> That's warm. Honestly, negative eight to like negative 25 all feel the same. 